Hello everyone and welcome to the Vegan Gorilla and Friends. My name is Darren Connell. This is our seventh podcast and it's good fun. I am grateful that all my friends and my pals are coming on board. I am the 13th Apostle. How are you doing, Leah McRae? Hi Darren, how are you? Yes, I'm good. Um, thank you for coming on tonight. You're so welcome. I love that you're the 13th Apostle. Yeah, did you like I love that. How I squeezed that in at the end there. Totes. Totes loved it. No, it's By the way, you're looking awfully dapper, can I just say? Cheers, babes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you should see the bottom half of me, though. I'm wearing fucking flip flops and shorts. Oh, I thought you were going to see like wide fronts or something, the wee thong. No? I'm no far off it. Just because this is an artistic acting podcast, I yes. thought I'd put a nice yeah. hat on and a shirt. Yeah, you look quite directory. <laughs> Yeah. Be a director. <laughs> can't even be an actor. Yes, you can. Yes, you yes. can. <laughs> so thank you very much for coming on the show. How Thanks how have you been? Me. I've been okay. Um it's a bit mental, isn't it? Yeah. A bit crazy. Um I think initially I was a wee bit like we were all a bit shocked and kinda didn't really know what to do with myself, you know, especially like you'll be the same, like when you're when you work in performance and entertainment, you're like, you kind of, that's what you do. And it's like, how, what am I going to do, you know? So, and you feel a bit helpless to think of things that you can do f- for yourself, but also for other people. So, I think gradually we've all started to learn that we can do well. Learn. I'm still learning to do these things like we set up. I mean, I'm quite impressed in my wee set up here. I've got a wee mini ring, like, you know, and <laughs> I've got my tablet propped up. See the things I've been buying, though, like um, like tripod stands and all that, and, like, just things and wee HDMI cable things from a pad on my telly, things that I just wouldn't normally use. Thinking that Is I'm, this for self-tapes and podcasts and stuff? I'm not doing a lot of self-tapes, actually. I'm doing, um, yeah, it's like tr- basically trying to keep in touch with every day that follows my work, which I think is dead important, That because I can't, like, you, you're exactly the same. It's like more so my live work, you know? You're like, you need to keep in touch with your people, you know, because they're the best people that follow you, and you're like, I can't, I can't not speak to them at all or not, not see them, you know? So, And I think also it's important for us because we provide escape, that's what we do, whether it's through comedy or drama or song or dance or whatever we, we do, we provide escape for people and there's no more important time than pro- providing that in the there really. So that's the, one of the first things people turn to, I think, is entertainment, the TV, the radio, books, you know, whatever they want to do, music. So, yeah, I yeah. think it's... I think we've got to keep it going as best we can. Yeah, I think this is why I'm setting this up. I, I mean, there's nothing... It's just friends having a conversation, but yeah. it's just getting contact content out there, trying to remain positive, and maybe some people will see a side of you that they've never seen before. Yeah, I think so. And maybe when you're speaking to the ladies in your podcast, they'll see how nice and sweet you are. <laughs> Do you think I'm a... <laughs> yeah, I'd be a mad, charmer. I'd be like, yeah! <laughs> you give him a beamer pose. Yeah, sure, the yeah. sweetest boy. It's nice, isn't it, though? Because people, people wouldn't know what's like you're saying. There's sides to everyone that people wouldn't know. Yeah, so, like we are in the week. You normally chat with people, and <laughs> I love you. So I mean, well. we are in love with each other, aren't we? But you've got a bastard husband, so he is. He's next door, and all. He's fine. Is he? Aye. Oh, yeah, <laughs> so this is see since you've started in this industry this this must have been your biggest break since you've started what do you mean apart from like uh not working oh uh, well i was thinking that today and i was thinking how when we are shooting river city it's 14 weeks well not well i'll answer your question properly right this is what I do, Dan. Do, 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 do. So basically, I would say that's true for recent times, but certainly not in my career. I mean, I started and I was I graduated when I was nineteen, so I I had a lot of long, long periods of no work and financial insecurity and the stresses. And actually, what's happened now, similarly, my my peers like you guys or all our colleagues, it's like 
the fear creeps in again of of that that feeling of worrying about money and where your next job's coming from and that control being taken away from you. It's every performer's or freelancer's worst nightmare, isn't it? Yeah. So it's not the longest break I've had, but in recent times, I think I work a, a lot. I do work a lot and I'm, I'm so lucky to do that. I do generate a lot of work for myself, which I find difficult, but I think it's pivotal like it's so important in Scotland to create your own work because yeah there's not a lot a lot going on there's loads of great things going on but there's a lot of us and there's not as much as like the central hub like down in London and stuff but I think that I was thinking today that I think that I'm starting to realize now because we do have gaps uh, in River City and quite often in the summer is when I take a bit of a break because in the winter break I do pantomime and things I do quite often do tours. I was doing a tour, my very first tour this time last year. And um, so that's the kind of things that, that I'm now starting to realise aren't happening. And I'm like, oh, it's starting to hit me. You yeah. know, because I'm going like, and it is, it's like, what? I feel like my, I've said this loads of times that, and I've got no apology for it really, that my career is quite definitive of who I am. Like it makes up a, a lot of me, my job. It's, I don't know how I would do very well without it you know and that's the test in it you're like <laughs> yeah I think it's going to make or break a lot of people like yeah. we need to just be strong during this time and keep our chin up and remain positive have you been doing anything like that to kind of just keep my chins up keep your chin up you <laughs> <laughs> yeah I get a lot of, I love doing things like this. I love chatting to my pals and I love supporting other people's work like yours because you know how much a fan I am of your work. So you. I'm a big fan. He's so good. Um, <laughs> but uh, I think, um, I think for me, I don't know how you feel, but it's a wee bit different for us, isn't it? To kind of interview people. Like we chat all the time, but yeah, you do need to kind of prepare. Like I've been doing a wee bit in a, and I'm hoping to have you, and we will reverse the roles, and I can interview you because I'd love to do that. Um, of course, I'd love that if you would if you would come on and, and chat to me. But I think that there's quite a lot of pressure in there because you're like you're kind of stepping out your comfort zone, but at the same time, these are the type of things that give you a wee boost because you're doing something a wee bit different and you haven't a plan for it and set it all up, and then you've almost starting to find a structure to your week a wee bit more and. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to do a lot, a lot of my time at the moment has been taken up with video requests from people, colleagues, people in the industry, and also a lot of people who watch the shows that I do, or my show, or, um, or pantomime, or things that I'm involved in, and um, it's a nice thing to be able to have the time to do them, because normally you, I, I do do as many as I can normally, but now I'm, I manage to get through a, a bit more, which is nice, and I think um, it was my grand's birthday just the other day, right, on Sunday, and some of my, my pals in the River City cast sent her some videos because she loves the show and normally we would do stuff all together. So she felt she was having a wee party because we put it on video and all the messages came through. And see my parents, who obviously they know everybody that I work with and they, they know a lot of people from TV and comedians like you and people that they that they know. And they're so kind of, kind of used to it. But see their faces, like watching this video, they were totally overwhelmed they were like totally agog like we couldn't believe this was happening and I was like that you need to remember that because you're like that's what that's what people when they get videos are like because that was my parents who know these people you know and yeah. I just thought I just think it's that's a good thing and to kind of keep spirits high for you and other people maybe getting the videos oh definitely it's uh it's good for the soul isn't it I always thought that way River City and uh, not River City sorry Panto um, I always thought, because um, I'm a stand-up comedian, I thought, oh, I can read a panto. But there's so much more to panto than just being on stage, helping disabled kids, video requests, people that can't afford tickets coming to the show, and you get yeah. to meet them all. It's, it's good. It's good for yeah. you, man. Pantomime is so important to me because it's normally, well, it tends to be one of the first places that children ever will go into a theatre. And that's why I think it's so important. And I think that everybody, most people can kind of remember their first, maybe one or two panels they ever saw. A lot of people can go, I remember. And, you, and 
it's great for children in general, but it's also great for like the aspiring actors and actresses. Cause I, that's where I decided I wanted to be an actress. I was watching part. I was watching Joe McFadden. Part of He's he great. knows. He knows this because we went. We actually trained in the same place, but it was I was a wee girl at school then. And uh, and he you know I told him I was like I I watched saw you in pantomime and I was like I want to do that it's amazing so it's, that's a what was your first panto that I saw yeah Aladdin aye Aladdin it's do you remember who was in it Joe it wasn't it was a it was a college because I was here with the school and it was a, it was alongside college pantomime and then oh, I ended okay. up going training there I mean I didn't know I trained there I was much younger and I ended up doing panto there. I did the Wizard of Oz there, I was a cowardly lion. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be a good lion. <laughs> so far, no, I mean, there might be people that don't know who you are, but I doubt it because... There will be people who don't know, I'm sure. Even people in my family don't know who I'm are. They're like, you're still in that police squad, Joe. <laughs> Or see, when you get an interview, do you always get asked the same questions? I always get asked, do you know Kevin Bridges? i seen Kevin Bridges eating a pie and fucking soul coach. Um, <laughs> did you know anything about that? Do you, but? <laughs> yeah, fuck. <laughs> I don't think Kevin eats a lot of pies anymore. He's looking quite lean. He's a sexy bastard. Gonna stop telling me that you love other comedians when I'm here. Oh, another man. Aye, that's hurting my soul. I love you. What did I ask you there? I love you as well. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You asked me if I normally get asked the same questions. Aye, what I was saying is you're currently in River City. Yeah. But people may know you from Gary Tank Commander, yeah. obviously, Panto. So, yeah. um, what, which stage do you see currently? Obviously, you were known for Gary Tank Commander, but you're uh -huh. getting recognised more for because of River City? Oh, yeah, River City's a huge... River City's, like, um, the fan base is, like, a bit of an institution, and so it's almost instant from when you're on screen to then this jump between... Kind of, I still... It's really nice. I still get recognised for Julie, but it depends. It's very much depends what my hair's like. And see, with Julie, it's when people hear me. I don't know why it is. I didn't think I sounded like it anymore because I'm a bit older, but people switch and they go. <clears throat> and I can almost tell by the way people approach me what show they're a fan of. Because if it's Julie, they're like, hi, I'm like, they're a bit more like, all right. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's, it's a big um, shift. That's something that you never really get very used to. And I think it's really interesting because a lot of people will comment on I mean not people like me but huge stars and things and they'll say things like you know well it's part of their job and what do they expect and but I think you know like it is something that you really it's not so much just about you it's the people that you're with like my husband as you know he's quite private and stuff so <laughs> and he's through there <laughs> and he yeah. like he would be like you know for eating dinner or whatever he'd be a bit like god like people come over and I think like there's an element of that where you've got to learn how to take control of the situation because people will come over because you're in their living room every week. And I was trying to work out what the difference was between, you know, maybe being part of a show and then, you know, maybe being on stage and the difference of people coming over. But I think it's because you're this serial character and they're, you're in their house every week, so they feel like they know you. And sometimes they come right over and, like, even if you're having dinner or whatever, and it's a bit like... <sighs> Because it's, yeah. it's not always about me, it's about who, who I'm with, you know. But mm -hmm. I do think it is part of your job. I do think it is, and I think it's, it's something you've got to expect. And I, I'm really, really grateful. I'm a big, big champion of all the people that support my work because I just wouldn't have a job without them in there. And I'm so lucky that I've got so many nice people. So I do, I always tell people, come up and say hello. And I would rather, though, I don't know if you get this, but... I would rather people just came up and said hello, and I know it's dead nerve wracking because I'm the same when I see someone, you know, from yeah. television or whatever, and I'm a bit like, oh, should I? Should? But I would rather they did that than the whispering thing because that makes me come like out that on the phone, on yeah. the phone, or where, 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 and you just see their pal, where, 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 and you're like mm -hmm. that, and it's dead awkward because you're like, should I say? Should I speak? You don't <laughs> want to be like, hi, and they're like, we just recognise you through school or something. Do you know what I mean? Like, hi, hi, you're, hi, it's me. <laughs> You're like a total dick. 
But I it's, had that... it's, it's a big thing. It is a big, um, yeah. a big recognised show. It's I've lovely. had that with meals, like sitting having a meal with my mum and my niece. Yeah. And I, a guy, you could literally do that and touch him. And he was just like, there's that boy you asked that Scott Squad, the boy that plays Bobby. And I'm like, that bit of pizza. I'm like, why? All right, mate. And he's Bye. like, hi. Like, I'm a dick. I'm like, just say all right. I know. Okay. I was in my car one time, and this woman, I'll never forget it. Hope she hears this. She might think about it. So I was in my car, and the window was down a wee bit. I was in a car park. I just came out the shops, and I heard this woman in the next car, and her window was down. She said, it is. It is her. It's her. It's her out of her city. It is. And he's like, no, it's no. She says, it is. What one? And he's in the extra that. The wee fat one. The wee. I was like that. I was literally there. I was like, I'm right here. It's things like that where you kind of go, oh, guys, you've got to remember yeah. that it's just people, you know, we're just doing yeah. a job. It's an amazing job and so grateful. But sometimes people can be quite harsh sometimes. And I find that difficult at times because I like to be kind. I mean, we all have a joke and I poke fun at myself. I mean, I've got a show called My Big Fat Fabulous Diary. I mean, I'm under no illusions and it's okay to have fun, but I think you just need to be careful sometimes, you know, especially on the old social media because it can be a cruel place. Yeah, I've seen nine out of ten times. I bet you she looked like she got hit with a shovel, so <laughs> I wouldn't worry about it. But I've had that before, Andrew will tell you, my trusty assistant. Um, about two years ago, we were on the, uh, the podcast, and that's when I was at my heaviest and my unfittest, and there was this guy, and Andrew was kind enough not to say anything, but he kept asking, when I was saying, is there any questions? He was saying, why is dad put on so much weight? Is there something wrong with him? Did something happen? And then I watched the podcast again that night, and I was like, Fucking hell, man. But Andrew was obviously like, I'm yeah. not going to say that out loud. And I was like, God, man, that cut, cut me so deep. You get a hundred yeah. nice comments and then you see that. It's really difficult because you do, we we know, right? We're like, listen, it doesn't matter. We, it's too important to you that matters. But I think when you're a performer, you've got to have a... We can't do our jobs without any sensitivity. Like, we're all sensitive. Comedians, actors, writers. You, we wouldn't be able to create characters and create the things we do without being sensitive people. So I think we do. It, it can strike a chord. Like, it can hit a nerve. Um, sometimes as well, when people don't always know, like, you, you don't always know what's going on with somebody. There might be reasons and things. And... It's this this barrier, I think, of the, the screen. Like, you would not go up to somebody face-to-face. People maybe maybe would, right? But general, generally, I don't think they would. All right, what you, how come you're so fat? Like, are you all right? Are you getting sick or what? What's happening? Like, And you're like, what the fuck? Like, do you know what I mean? Like, so that's why Aye. I find that a bit difficult. But I do understand that it's not always people's faults. I think there's a lot of gossipy type. Um, media out there that's not always informative, it's not factually correct, as we know, and yeah. that, that kind of feeds that hysteria and that kind of, the gossip people want to know, people want to know bad stuff all the time, and yeah. and like, you know big dark secrets and all this stuff, and if somebody's struggling people really like to hammer home that one, don't they they always like, they're very, people are very judgmental, very yeah. unkind and a, a, a bit of a lack of empathy sometimes but that's in the minority, isn't it? I think. Definitely. I think it's just because, I mean, you're only human. You, Of course you're going to respond to negativity, but like you say, the majority is amazing. If yeah. it wasn't amazing, we wouldn't do it. Totally. I and mean, I've got the, the bit, like, I love doing live stuff um, of my own. It's the first time I've really, the last couple of years is the first we, for years and years and years, every day was saying, like, when I was working with the comedy unit and everything, they were all like, oh, just write. Now, I can't, I'm not a writer, and go and do stand up. I'm not a stand up. And I just was like, I can't do it, I can't do it. And then I think when I did that um, big play, uh, 51 Shades of Maggie, which was a big one woman, it's a play, but it was a huge, it was like a two hour monologue, like, didn't leave a stage, it was massive. And I think that when I did that, and I was also doing kind of cabaret type nights like musical um musical kind of review type nights where it was like a mixture of different songs and I kept filling in I kept like seeing I was doing like 
like really nice ballads and that I would get to like the end of like I was trying to think of one that I, I remember I remember even when I when I sang for the guy Paul at Inside Out who does it the first time I, I did it the guy I know him he's my pal um, and I remember I was saying like I dreamed the dream right at the very end I was like it goes and da, 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 has killed the dream I dreamed then the piano goes do 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 and then I just went it's dead sad, isn't it? Because <laughs> I couldn't hold my water, I couldn't. And so when we were doing the shows, I used to be the one that would be totally crapping it before I went out, right? So nervous, and then I would go out and I'd be like, Bleh. and it just used to be full of this, like just this nonsense, just chat and pure gal- wee galasani, you know, that was shaking in the dressing room. And that's when I just thought you should really do combine these things and sing and do do kind of. I don't like to call it stand up because I'm terrified of stand up. So I just like to call it like my one woman shows. And Matt Perrin, who's my promoter, who's like one of the biggest promoters of stand up comedy in the world, is like, that. Yeah, you're doing stand up. No, 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 <laughs> no, no, I'm not, I'm not. Because it's terrifying. No, I don't you're doing stand up. You're doing stand up. No, I don't. I'm, no, it's scary biscuits, man. It's really. <laughs> I'm totally in awe of you, especially in the intimate houses, like the stand and stuff. Like I'm not that sweaty, sweaty. I know, man. It's, I think I'm quite similar to you. Like before I go on stage, I, I'm sick of quite a lot. And Are you I'm actually always, sick? Yeah. Are you? Yeah. I've never been physically sick. <gasps> yeah. Oh, mate. Quite a lot, and then soon as I'm on stage, I'm alright. Do you know what's really nope. nice about watching you on stage is um, because you are quite like, because you're very kind and really, well, I know you as somebody that's very, very kind and like a really like gentle, nice man. And then see when you're on doing your stand up, it's like this thing happens. And I just love you a wee bit there. I'm like, oh. you is like pure rock in this whole place. It's just like you've got a really great um, command of the room. I think, which is lovely. Oh, it's thank hard. you very much. You're an absolute babe. That's why I've got you on. I'm only getting people on that I think are goodies. I'm not going to get any really? on. Nah. Oh, good. Nah, you don't want any idiots on your podcast. Nah, it's, like... it's only people that I, I love, respect, and I feel like they've got something nice to say. I'm not going to uh... get the, the fannies on, the fannies. No fannies. <laughs> I know. I'll never be on fucking Clyde or anything, will I? No fannies on that. <laughs> I know you're making me, because I'm trying to be well behaved because I've, I have got a bit of a gutter mouth sometimes, but um, I'm trying to be well behaved and not swear too much. Did you just say I've got a gutter mouth? A gutter mouth? Yeah. Is that, is that something else? <laughs> no, I've never heard that term before, though. <laughs> I thought, I thought you were going to tell me I'd seen some dead root. No. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> no, no, it's all good. Um, but yeah, I'm actually <clears throat> been doing a wee bit of this myself, like trying to, not like a, a podcast, but I've been doing Facebook Lives, right? And uh, and I was trying to find a way to do kind of interviews. So I've been just recording some interviews. I did my first one with a special person i'm going to put it up at the weekend so you can tell me what you think it's it's a quite a big it's quite a long interview actually i thought i would i would i would be quicker but because i thought i was a bit frightened i thought oh, i won't be able to you know interview somebody for that long and then before i knew it it was like Whoa. how long fun i think it was i think it ended up 45 minutes that that's all right can Is you it? not name the guest not yet, because I'm going to announce, because no. it's dead exciting. It's like but... Kevin Bridges. <laughs> <Come on>. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, but I, I was thinking about that because you were saying it's like people that you admire, and that's what I like to do. So I'm going to interview people like my friends from this world, like people like you, and I've got a, love, a couple other lovely people that, that have said they'd love to do it. But I also want to interview some people that are friends of mine that people maybe wouldn't know about, you know, like um, like people, viewers will know who they are, but they might not realise that we were that we know each other and we're friends. They're from different kind of worlds, you know, like different industries. So I'm yeah. quite excited, but I'm a bit, it's a bit nerve-wracking as well. Don't be nerve wracking, cause I, I look at you. You're that type of person, aren't you? You're quite cabaret, like singer, 
comedian, <laughs> actress, you know, everybody in the industry. It'd be amazing to do like a one woman show like that. Um, just kind of what I'm doing, it's just to create yeah. content. It's, if I'm doing this as a form of therapy because I'm trapped in the fucking house 24 hours a day. Um, so apart from when I'm going out for 25 mile runs, but apart from that, I'm trapped how, in the how, house. Have you been running? Like, are, are, you, are you going on runs or are you going on walks? Runs. I've only been I running. Like how- what how much are you? How how? What are you running? Because I'm not honestly like I'm amazed by this. Because now I hurt my leg and all that. I can't eat. I'm crap at running. Well, I've I haven't run. I used to run all the time, and then I get Did lazy. You? Yeah, and then I obviously you know that I had depression, put on a yeah. lot of weight, like disasters amounts of weight, and then when this started, I was like I just refused to get unhealthy. So yeah. I've got a next door neighbour that I'm friendly with, and he was like. When I go back to work, I want to be fit. And I was like, why don't we just spur each other on? The first run we could, we did, we couldn't get run a track four times. And today we ran a 10K. So it's That's just about amazing, self. That's amazing. Fuck it, man. I just like, I don't know what else to do. Do you know, know what I mean? I know. I bought, I bought a bike, actually. Me and my husband got new bikes because we've been... Can you stop talking about your husband? Oh, my God. Yeah, he's quite gorgeous, but... He is. He's a babe. He is he's a an babe. absolute babe. He loves you he's, as well. He's got a beard as well. He's beautiful. He's not. No, no. This is the problem, right? He's not. He won't grow his beard. He's got, he's got, he's got like, stubble. Yeah, and a slight. Well, I don't know. It doesn't con. It doesn't constitute a beard. I don't think it meets the criteria. Are you on the wine already, Andy? Can you put yourself on mute, mate? Sorry. It's water. I'm on mute. I can't hear it. I can't hear Andy. Yeah, I've been sorry. on mute. I thought I heard background noise. There, so sorry. Maybe it was Paul. Hi. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so, I rudely interrupted you there. You said you bought a bike. Yeah. So. Um, because we've been wanting to buy bikes for ages and you kind of don't have the time. So, but I swear, and Darren, I used to go out on bikes all the time when I was really, like, when I was younger, my dad was in the army. I lived in a village down in Cambridge. It was amazing, beautiful. Me and my friend Ashley used to go out on our bikes all the time. And I was like, I bought this bike and I'm like, ready to go. And I was like, oh my God, it's really hard. Like, it's really hard. I'm like, do you know what? It's yeah. making me laugh. Like I was going up wee, wee hills, right? You know, you see cyclists and they kind of click the gears, they get into a lower gear and all that, right? I was in the like the lowest gear and it was just a wee slope, right? And it was people walking by me, people walking past me on the bike. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> dying, like actually dying with my wee helmet on because you must wear your helmet, got to be safe. But my God, That's me good. on a bike, right? You like, like, <laughs> really, like leg and hangs on, we are we. Make sure that we bug helmet, big massive purple face, like a cure motor for the high face. This is alive. <laughs> at least you're trying though. You're trying your best. That, but that's it is all getting matters. easier. And now I can do three miles, which is quite cool. So I can do, like, my mum and dad live a mile and a half down the road. So I can, dra- I can cycle down there and, and back just to, like, wave at them through their window. Yeah. and cycle back so uh, that i'm quite pleased with that because for me that's a lot but good but yeah a lot of people always kind of devalue what they do as well like a free a free mile on a bike is good yeah i think i think it's not bad eh? i mean it's i would never have thought i'd be able to go a mile and a half without stopping i think that's quite cool for me like because i couldn't even couldn't even <laughs> Even the street. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's good to see that you're trying to remain positive and you're trying to get a wee bit fitter. Yeah, that's yeah. what it's all about. It's hard for people, isn't it? Like, um, I was actually looking at. Do you know we do Joe Trucini? I don't know him personally, oh, but I know who it is. He's a diamond, right? And uh, I was actually just looking. He posts a lot about um, having borderline personality disorder is he borderline he's got a personality disorder right i think it's yeah. borderline personality disorder and he's like suicidal a lot of the time and really open about it and talks about it all the time and really helps people and he's put a message out today just saying kind of three things that he does when he feels like because he says it really honestly he says 
today I don't want to kill myself, but yesterday I wanted to do it. And he, and he just says it. And it's like it's like this thing that people kind of suppress and nobody yeah. wants to talk about. And he just says it. And he does all these really cool videos to show the split, the, the, the split between the two people that he's got. And I just think it's really amazing that he's doing that because, and I was thinking about this before I spoke to you, because it's like, I think it's important to say for all of us, because I think, like, I, I get quite anxious and I, a lot of people that follow my work probably wouldn't really know that. They think I'm probably quite laid back, quite confident. And, but that's that thing that we talk about before we go on a stage. It's like we're, we're in a dressing room, like literally hating our lives. And then we go out and something happens. But I think I was chatting to a friend of mine about this, who's a performer, and they said a really good thing. And I think it's true. They were saying that the job we do requires so much adrenaline, right? That it can't be good for you can't be good for you to spike right up and like I don't do drugs Darren so that's like my that is like the only thing that I've ever genuinely experienced is adrenaline and I'm like it's it's almost like a drug I imagine that you and that's probably why a lot of people do do drugs because you need to come down for there it's like how do you get and then how do you get back that feeling back again if you're not doing it and, and I think that can be a real a real um a real problem for people's mental health almost you know so this time yeah. is a weird period for all of us as performers because we're not doing that, that spike of adrenaline. Mm -hmm. So I think these things are maybe good because they give you a wee, you know, when you're going to go and chat, you get a wee, like, a wee burst of like, feeling as if you're going to go and do a wee bit yeah. of a wee, wee performance, a wee baby one. Look, it's made me go in for a shower and uh, <laughs> put a shirt on. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm the type of person, see, when I feel down or... <laughs> No, that good. Um, <laughs> Don't wait my ass. <laughs> yeah, but that's a, but that's the thing people do. I mean, I won't like if I feel crap, I won't wash my hair. And obviously, when you're a performer, you can't get away with it, you know, a lot. And you and I always feel better when I'm at work anyway. But sometimes I feel if I've been feel, if I've been have having anxiety, it does. There is a cycle with anxiety and depression. And depression will always come with it at some point in the form of guilt or like what's wrong with me you know and it, then you start to beat yourself up and before you know it you're in a bit of a yeah. slump and I think it's dead important to chat about just now because I think lots of people think that they're on their own with it and that nobody kind of gets it and nobody really knows and you're like I but do they really know and they don't understand you're like I think a lot of people go through problems with their mental health like and battle yeah. them all the time well, if you look at it this way, and it's cliched and it's cheesy and it's been used so many times, but your body is like a machine and from birth to death, it's not going to run smoothly. Mm. So something's going to happen down the line. Like depression could just be a mm. physical reaction that your body's having yeah. or you could have an actual reason. I mean, yeah. you get different types of depression, don't you, as well? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm That's not an so expert, true. obviously. I you're so wise. Hey, babe. Is there no end to your talent? Um, I'm not just a set of teeth, babe, you know. <laughs> I think that's the same, is it? Is that the same? I don't know. I don't know. I, well, I was saying my mouth's, I've got a mouth like a gutter. Is it meant to be like my mouth's in the gutter, maybe? I don't know. Who cares? Let's just run with it, babe. Let's just roll with it. Aye, but I know that wee guy, Zo uh, what's his name again? Joe? Joe oh, Tuccini, oh, he's so good. That's him with the skinhead and the glasses and he does the dancing. Yeah, oh my God, how good are his, his dancing, his, his yeah. satirical dance. Oh, He's very funny, Andy, have you seen oh. that? Sorry, no, I've no. Oh, he's, he's so funny. good, very funny. You should, you should have just said hi there. Yeah. <laughs> I, had, I had all these wee quotes written down, I can't remember any of them, but he does all these, like... I can't even think of one example of the dance steps he makes up. They're so funny. Is he a dancer? I don't know if Joe will. Joe probably will be able to dance. I can't remember where he trained, so I imagine mm -hmm. he maybe can, but I'm not sure. I'm yeah. not sure. I did work with him years ago uh, when I was working on Grown Ups. We did a crossover for Children in Need, so I got to, I got to work with the Two Pints cast because I was working with Sheridan anyway on Grown Ups, and she's played obviously Janet, which is about a cult, Two Pints of Lag is about a cult following, wasn't it? And yeah. um, and she did the crossover, so she was playing the two characters. And it was so much fun getting to 
it was weird because like I didn't realise how big a deal it was for me because I was like, oh, Two Pints is a great show. I mean, I love Susan Nixon who writes it. She's a great friend of mine and I loved it. But at the time, I didn't realise that I was a fan or anything of it. And then, see, when I went onto the set, I was like, it was so yeah. cool to see everything, you know? So I was I looking through then. your and on that movie database and I never realised that you were, that that happened. And I was like, oh, that's brilliant. Oh, that's fantastic. No, no. Um, to the, oh, the other crossover. Show. <coughs> it was Aye. great. We did like a, the three shows because they were in, Joe Trattini was in Coming of Age. So you had mm-hmm. the young show and then you had Grown Ups that was slightly younger and then uh, Two Pints of Lager, which was the original uh, one. And Susan Nixon wrote Two Pints, uh, Two Pints and Grown Ups. So that's how I met uh-huh. her. And lovely Jerry McLaughlin. You know Jerry, don't you? Yes, that's- Jerry. Um, people might know him from Burniston. Yeah, that's how I met him. He was a writer on that. Oh, aye. Uh, I never knew that. Yeah. Well, originally, it's quite funny because Warren Brown, who... Do you know Warren Brown is in Luther and he's he's gone kind of... He's gone kind of... Whoa, his career's yeah. doing marvellously. He's in that strike back and everything. And Yes, he's in amazing in Luther. Amazing. He did this great thing as well. I can't remember. It was a cop thing that was brilliant. Um, but... They're really, really good mates, right? But when I when I went to the table read of Grown Ups, I had never seen Grown Ups before. I think it was season two, season two I did, and then season, I can't remember. Anyway, but Jerry was reading, so this is how good Jerry is. Jerry was reading for Warren, but I didn't know any of the cast, right? And he was reading in this Mancurian accent, because Warren's, that's where he's from, like he's from Warrington, Warren is. And then um, Warren was off on another job, so he, he never joined till later. And then Jerry like came up to me like after doing the table reading, he was like, "So, uh, what was he said? <laughs> Where about you from?" And I went, "I think I said Scotland." And Jerry's like, that. <laughs> "Then it turned out he was like totally glass region," and I was like gobsmacked because he'd done this brilliant read as this part that was the he wasn't even playing. Amazing, I Jerry's a he's a good guy as well. I might ask him to try and come on if he's not. He's good, a lovely he? boy. Yeah, he's, he's a great a guy. Boy. What's that so, saying, Darren? What, that? what your hair? Look at my roots. I think you suit it. I mean, maybe not when you're like that. But <laughs> what? <laughs> this is why I'm wearing the hat. My fucking hair is getting too long. Look how long your hair is. Hey, baby. I like your hat. Put your hat on. Let me see the hat. See that? Why is that light different? Look how bright how, you look at your eyes popping now. Now the hat's on. How's that happening? Because maybe it's tight on my Oh dear, you were going to do that minging face there. I knew exactly what you were going to do there. Do not do that. <laughs> that horrible. I don't know how you produce that face. That's my face. I saw your threat. No, don't, don't even go there. <laughs> <laughs> That's the face that the Lord gave me. <laughs> so that that is the other part of the podcast that we're going to go into. Now we're going to talk about our Lord Saviour Jesus Christ, and I want <laughs> get on. No, but like get on, get on, it. Um, <laughs> get on. Are obviously with the situation, we don't really know what's happening in the world. But are you are you down for Panto this year? Is that planned, or can you not announce it? I do not feel allowed. Well, I, I don't. It's not announced. I was maybe he's I, maybe he's no. I was very excited to be returning to a place that I performed pantomime in before. Very excited indeed, but I don't know if it will. If we're going to be doing pantomime this year or not, it's just so. It's just so up in the air, which is oh yeah. God, it's one of my. It's as you know, it's the toughest thing I think you'll probably ever do is, is pantomime. Um, in terms of the physical, it, it, it's not. Pantomime's obviously the dialogue and everything's very simplistic. And but oh my god, like the to to do four hours of theatre a day, like oh my god, and keep the yeah. attention. It's so you know all this, like the children keep their attention and all that. But I just love pantomime so much. I love my very favourite thing in panto to play is fairy, and I've actually not played fairy. Um, last year I played like a dame, a female dame, which was like a pure honour because to play dame as a woman is is quite unusual. And uh, and I could I actually get 
when I opened Alan McHugh's script and saw that she was like, because I went, oh, I wonder what oh. they'll do. And I opened it up and she had this big monologue, this big, you know, bold, strong monologue, Deb Gallus. And I was just like, oh, yes. So I oh, was that's like, brilliant. So I really hope to be back. I really hope we are, we, we are able to go back and do it. Because yeah. I love it. I love it a lot. That's brilliant. I'm buzzing for you. I love Panto as well. I want to go back. I've never got to see you in Panto because I'm always doing, and you were in Dundee, weren't you, I think, when I... Yeah. Because I'd love to see you in Panto. Maybe I'm going to be one of these dicks. Maybe I can be in your one. <laughs> 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 you get I'm people like that, don't you? How do you can't be in River City. Can't be in River City, mate. <laughs> As Bobby, but Bobby Muir in River City. <laughs> But imagine Bobby and Pan. Oh my God, he's my very favourite. I love that character very much. Imagine him. Imagine him just walking onto the stage. Like, could he kick him at the audience? Couldn't he? They're confused. Does he know what he's doing there? Probably so fall off the stage. So funny. That'd be so good. I'm looking forward for all that getting back to normal because I miss mm. Bobby. I miss Pan as well. Well, you were stood down, weren't you? You were shooting Scott Squad when we were shooting River City. And we all got stood yeah. down on the same day, I think. Yeah, I think. it was a it was a really surreal experience. You could feel it in the air, though. There was a tension. It was horrible. You, could, you knew it was coming, didn't you? We get. I don't know if this happened to you, but it was very bizarre because we were told we were called into a meeting and we were told that it was probably going to happen, but they couldn't confirm. And do you know what we had to do? Yeah. We had to go and shoot an afternoon's drama. Like me and Gail went and shot this big, huge four-page scene, and we were like. That. <laughs> And it was just like, because what else are you going to do? You know, there's no point in them standing us down. We all wanted to continue. We didn't know for definite it was going to happen. You're like, well, let's go and film the rest as much as we can. So we've got content there for the viewers. But yeah. I remember feeling really overwhelmed. But it was, and then we'd see when we left the set, it was so emotional because everyone was like, listen, you know, take care. We just didn't know when we were going to see each other again. And that's yeah. like... Oh God, it's, see when you think back, that seems like, it honestly seems like about six months ago. Yeah, it was only six weeks ago. Unbelievable. What a crazy uh, time, eh? It is sad, isn't it? I was worried about all the kind of crew and stuff, and then you start to think, is everybody going to get paid, and everybody's well, yeah. got bills to pay, and it's so yeah. sad. I've got a couple of questions here, actually, from uh, River City fans. Okay. Kieran Kaw asked, what's it like being in the cast of one of the best shows on TV right now? Oh, that's so lovely, Kieran. That's our big boss's name, Kieran. Um, maybe it's him. <laughs> 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 um, what's it like being in the cast? It's, yeah. It's, it's brilliant. It's a joy. It's, it, I used to, when I was a younger actor, I used to watch soaps and kind of think that so actors, even though we are not a soap, we're a continuing drama because we're an hour a week. Um, but I used to think that anyone that played like a character continually must get bored. They must do. And a lot of people, I see a lot of people saying that, but actually there's a pure joy. It's really, it's a really unusual experience to get to play. So, you know, when you do a play or whatever and you really study that character and you know them and then you've got to let them go. Like, for example, Julie, I mean... I love Julie from Gary Tank and I don't know when I'm ever going to play her again and, I, and I, I've and i got no control over that and it's like, oh, you know, yeah. whereas with River City, you're, you're, you're getting to play a character in all different situations, which is so unusual. You, you start to learn how they would respond. You know them like inside out. You're so invested in them. You know how they, you know everything about them. Like you could hot seat, which I think is amazing that you go, God, I could sit and hot, I could answer questions about her and that's like, that's yeah. stuff you, you were training, you know, you found hard, you're like, God, I've got to go and think about this character and where they've been and what they do. And whereas with this, it's like <laughs> you just play her so often that you know all the answers. So yeah. I would say, in answer to your question, Kieran, it's an absolute joy. It's very hard work, very, very hard work because of the, the way that we shoot. And we've got the best crew in the world at River mm -hmm. City. Our crew are incredible. You'll know a lot of them, Darren, because of the Scottish crews always tend to kind of rotate so you'll know a lot of our crew as well and they're just the hardest working crew we all work under a lot of pressure towards the end of the shoot day um and it's but it's a joy i love being part of that show i'm very proud to be part of it amazing thank you one more question then it's from 
I think I'm dyslexic, by the way. I can't read my own writing. Um, Gabriella, I sound like I'm making this up. Gabriella <laughs> Civil <laughs> Yard. Um, your character has been involved in so many situations in River City. Um, <laughs> miscarriage. Are you laughing at miscarriage? <laughs> Absolutely not. Fostering dementia. But if you're moving on towards um, stories in the future, is there anything that you would like to sink your teeth into as an actress that you've not done so far? Yeah, um, I would like to see... Well, uh, we've seen Ellie losing it a wee bit. Um, have to be careful what I say. So we've seen Ellie losing it a wee bit with the panic over the situation that they've been in with the murder of Joel. So we've seen a different side to her, a heightened, diff, a heightened side to her character where she is flapping and it's quite funny because I've seen a lot of comments of people going, oh, Ellie's doing my nut in wheel and I'm like, yes! Because that means that they believe it, like that she's actually doing a nut in with a panic. Yeah. She, it's dead hard to stay up there all the time. I'd be in the canteen like that, like try to calm down because she's just the, the essays on the set were laughing the other day because I was like, Ellie, she's going to kill me. Ellie is killing me, by the way. And they were like, everyone was laughing. The crew was laughing. The deck, because she was just up to there and I couldn't calm her down. Like she was just, because we've got to get any such a, it's such a natural performance that sometimes you're really, the emotions are happening, you know? So yeah. I would like to see, I li I'd like to see a bit more of that, a bit more of her crumbling and a little bit more of her um, I like to, I like the feisty side of Ellie. You don't see that a lot. And when she first came in, she was quite feisty. She came in with beautiful Graham Cradle, as you know, and uh, she was dead feisty with him. You know, she really stood up to him. They used to argue back and forward, and she was dead headstrong and stuff. So I miss some of that about her. We do see it sometimes when she has to pull rank. She'll do it, but in her family dynamic, she's a pure. She tries to keep everything very calm, so she's very, very um, calming, and she doesn't really fly off the handle a lot. So I think I'd yeah. like to see her. I mean, I'd love to see her do something really bad. Maybe yeah. she has done something really bad. <laughs> Who knows? Shoot somebody. I always feel like that as an actor. Like um, I'm quite lucky because some of the stuff that you've done in River City, it's so raw and emotional. Um, obviously, a lot of people have been affected by it. I mean, yeah especially the dementia stuff that hit me and I feel like quite lucky playing Bobby because Bobby's only like a lovable kind of child like person. Yeah. I'm like god man I wonder what that feels like to kind of put yourself in a situation when you're like people are actually struggling with this it must be quite draining. Yeah there's quite a lot of pressure because when I did the miscarriage storyline my friend had really recently had an ectopic pregnancy and wow. she was she was totally destroyed and when I was shooting, oh god, I, it was it was interesting because sometimes with the way we work, it's just the way it happens and we all experience it on the cast. We just get to a point in the day where we have to shoot something, like we, we just need to shoot it. So we were doing the actual scene where Ellie finds out that she's miscarried her baby. At the end of the day, like half it was really late. And so what happened was normally we go in and we'll read like, you know, we'll, we'll, read the, we'll read the scene, then the director will block it, then we'll rehearse it, then the crew will see it, then we'll step off, the cameras will come in, then we'll rehearse it on camera, and then we'll shoot it. But because the, there was not a lot of time, we the crew were setting up the space, so we ran the lines and kind of it was a very static still scene anyway, so the director was quite happy just to go, like once we had the cameras in place. So the room was all set up, so I walked into the room, right? I wasn't in the room, then watched it all getting created round about me like we normally do. I walked into the room, lay on the bed, shot. It was like so real that it was so. And then, see, when I let everyone was packing up and I sat in this bed and I was like, because I'd been crying in the scene, so it takes a while sometimes to calm down. And also, I was just like, I was, I was just sitting there and they turned the monitor off. I'll never forget it. They turned the monitor off. The scan, there's a real, a real scan that they use as well. Of a, of a baby that's lost its life and you turn the monitor off right and it's gone I, 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 honest to god I was like gobsmacked and like and everyone was dead sensitive that's what I mean about her crew like 
everyone was just dead quiet, like rolling away cables, and because I think they knew, and I just couldn't get up off the bed, you know. And then driving home that night, I just felt so emotional for all the people that I know that have been through it. And I was so lucky because I got some lovely feedback from that from people, which I was worried about because I'm like, I worry that people maybe don't want to see it that have gone through it. They don't want to see it on TV. They're like, why are you doing this? Like, why are you showing this on telly? But actually, I got the opposite. And people saying, you know, it was a real good, I mean, it's all of us that have done it, me and the writers and everybody, but we got yeah. some really nice feedback from it. And because it, it, that's important, because it's terrible. It's researching that was brutal as yeah. well to read about how people feel. And it affects yeah. so many people. Most most people you know have been affected by it at some point. And it's so, Every, so everyone, sad. Everyone. It was a beautiful a beautiful reaction to a heartbreaking story. Yeah. Um, you know. But you know what? I think on that note, very sombre note, I think we'll end it at that. Um, is there anything else that you would like to say or is there anything you would like to pun? What about your website you know, and stuff? Well, I would just say that I'm doing, if people want to catch up with me, I do live with Leah on a Thursday night at half past eight after the NHS clap. Big shout out to all our incredible frontline workers everywhere, everybody that's going to work, especially the retail people, the retail staff, because I don't think they get enough of a shout out, you know, and they're in there every day working sometimes for a very low wage and they are at their work, they need to be at their work, you know, they're like, they, they, they need to be at their work. A lot of them are there because they're great people and they care, but a lot of them are there because they have to be at their work and their, their bosses are saying, work's open, you need to come in. So I just think they're incredible. And um, a huge shout out to all the NHS staff as we do it every week on a Thursday. And I give them a shout out on a Thursday as well because you just can't really put any words what they're doing. You, like, we can't say thank you enough. So I'd like to shout out to them and just... Um, and, I, and I'll see you soon because I hopefully you'll either come on one of my live chats or we'll do a wee interview like this and I can ask you loads of questions. Anytime, anytime Yay. you need me, I'm there. <laughs> Leah, I love you with all my heart, my soul. You Take too, care. darling boy. Thank you for doing this and for keeping everyone entertained. You're a Thank star. You. Lots Thank of love. You.